What's up guys? Uh, so I thought I'd make a quick video on my latest purchase. Uh, I think you might like it. Um, I know I do. I've had it probably three months now and I haven't actually used it that much. So it's the latest Samsung Q900R 8K TV. So I got the 75 inch panel. Um, so there's the Q9 and then there's the Q900 was the 8K series. So, um, so I'm sure you want to see what it looks like. Let's go take a look. So I have it mounted here in my front room. Um, this is quite an old house, this is a 200 year old house, uh, which had this archway installed, obviously. It's a feature of the house, an original feature of the house. Um, and I thought it was the perfect spot for putting the TV, so no way that I want it over the fireplace. Um, and then if it was on this opposite wall, I'd have the fire to my back, so wasn't interested in any of that. So this is the perfect spot for it. Um, so it's mounted straight onto that wall. And that wall is actually, all the internal walls in this house are actually uh, clay red brick um, with lime plaster on both sides. So it actually gave quite a good fixing. If it was just a, like a stud wall, you'd be actually quite pressed to find the studs and that kind of thing. So um, you get a large wall mount plate, uh, which I'll just show you a picture of here now. Um, and this plate, um, as you can see, I use so many Torx self-tapping screws. I think they're like uh, 150 mil screws. Uh, to go all the way into the wall uh, and then two of us basically hung it on the wall the actual panel itself so it's a very heavy panel I, I can't stress how heavy the panel is um, and that brings me on to the box so just for reference that's the 24 inch panel um, sitting on top of the box and the box is absolutely huge I know I said I bought this TV two months ago or three months ago and the box is still literally in this room because I got no way of getting rid of the box I keep planning, planning to bring it into to work and keep it in the warehouse, but um, I literally need a van or a lorry because it won't even fit in the back of a, an estate car uh, or a wagon. So it's uh, absolutely huge box. So you want to make sure you have the ability to uh, get it into your home and get rid of it in the first place. So, uh, so where are all the gubbins? So basically the Q900 series, and I think the, the, the Q9 series as well, um, basically the entire panel is powered by one tiny little fiber optic cable. Uh, which I actually have embedded in the wall. So I actually ran a channel all the way down here, um, basically behind the skirting, and it runs all the way over here um, to the separate box that basically Samsung includes with their Q900 series um, models. And I think a lot of their other models as well. So they're basically putting all the tuner, um, amplifier, um, all of the CPU, RAM, everything that controls the actual TV is actually in this box separately. So it allows the panel to be a lot slimmer than it would be otherwise. So. So I've got my Blu-ray player uh, and my uh, Sony amp down there as well. So uh, everything's neatly uh, stowed away. So I'll actually just show you this box in a bit more detail so you see what kind of ports and uh, connectivity you have on it. So I just moved the Quick Connect box up here so we can get a, a closer look at it. And the light's a bit better up here. Uh, so there are all the connections on the back of the actual box itself. The box itself, another thing to be aware of, it's a very heavy box, extremely heavy. So I'd, like, I'd even be wary about putting that on any kind of a glass shelf because it must weigh the guts of six or seven kilos. It's very, very heavy. You've got all your uh, antenna connections there on the left hand side, obviously a standard kind of kettle plug as well. Um, you've got your digital optical output, uh, regular RJ45 LAN on the back. Um, you have a total of four HDMIs. One of them is an ARC HDMI and that's your actual one connect connection as well, which is the cable I was talking about earlier on. So this is it down here. and. We were just amazed when we were installing this TV. We were almost baffled by how Samsung had managed to do it, but that is the only cable that powers the entire TV. So there's no other cables plugged in between the TV and down here with the one connect box. Um, it's like one super slim, maybe four or five millimeter thick cable. That provides all sound, all video, all power to the panel. Uh, and that's their kind of proprietary connector there as well. So it's pretty obvious which one goes into the actual uh, one connect box. Uh, you've got a few more ports on the side here as well, a few more um, USB ports. I actually have a 64 gig stick just plugged in there with uh, some MP4 files and the like. Um, and you can play directly off them as well. So that's the one connect box. Um, yeah, it's a pretty cool setup. It allows the TV to be a lot slimmer than it would be otherwise. That's the kind of slimness that we're looking at here. And one thing I didn't mention earlier on as well is the actual mount, you have to buy separately. Um, otherwise, it's just going to stand on two feet, which are actually still inside the box because I've got zero use for that. Um, but yeah, um, very slim design overall. 
Um, you can actually adjust, I'm not gonna do it now, but I can basically just push in on the top of the panel to adjust um, kind of the angle of the TV or push in at the bottom. So I actually have it pretty much bang on straight and uh, with a tiny bit of tilt. It tilts a little bit more at the top than it does at the bottom. Um, but yeah, a lot of adjustability once it's actually on the wall uh, and doesn't actually require two people to adjust at all. So, so that brings us on to the remote controls. Uh, Samsung actually includes two separate remote controls with this um, TV. Uh, this is kind of like the more kind of everyday use slimline remote control. Basically has all the functions that you need uh, for navigating menus and volume up and down, home buttons, all that kind of stuff. Basically all you need for everyday use. And then you get the kind of more conventional, ugly style remote control for uh, you know, setting up and configuring. And it's, it's handy to have the extra dedicated buttons, I suppose, on that. But typically that never gets used. Um, so there's a bit of glare on the screen, as you can see. So I'm actually just gonna close the shutters here, which is a nice handy thing to be able to do and basically turn the room into nighttime. So yeah, like most, like most people, you're not here during the day, so glare isn't ordinarily an issue. But we'll boot it up. And it's also, I'm not sure if it operates over Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, but you obviously you don't have to have it pointed directly at the TV uh, to actually navigate menus. So um, not sure what to show first, maybe. There's actually one or two examples on um, uh, YouTube, for example, of uh, 4K. Um, now, obviously, it's an 8K panel, but this will give you an idea of the kind of upscaling that it does. This is a great example. The quality is just absolutely exceptional, and the upscaling is really, really good. Just the level of detail is absolutely phenomenal. There's one particular shot of a lion coming up here and it's absolutely, this, this level of detail in the animal's fur and everything is absolutely incredible. And it, or it kind of retains its detail right up close. So yeah, really, really slick. Um, I'm actually just gonna navigate to the USB stick that's installed. That's the Data Traveler here, 3.0. The menu is just very intuitive, very easy to use. Um, I actually have another example of a, an animal style video with the Lion King trailer, but this is a 4K trailer with the AC3 sound. Everything the light touches is our kingdom. But a king's time as ruler rises and falls like the sun. One day. It's funny when I first got the TV, uh, me and my friend were both sitting down and we saw this line and we nearly had a heart attack. We thought it was an entire row of dead pixels, but as you can see, it's just a reflection here. Not the reflection, the actual light coming through the shutters, so. The sun will set on my time here and will rise with you as the new king. So yeah, you can just play these all day long, but um, Netflix is pretty decent. Uh, one thing, one of the first things I actually watched when I got the TV was um, uh, Breaking Bad. 
And it's funny because some of the earlier episodes, uh, the quality is not very good at all, as you might imagine in the pilot kind of uh, days. Um, now the quality did improve over the following seasons, but when you have a panel of this size and of this quality, it really does show up low quality images. Um, so like the very first few episodes were really quite grainy and maybe the, the first entire season, but then it did get progressively better. So, um, so the more and more kind of if it's 1080p plus, the panel performs very well. Um, if it's anything less than that, not particularly good. Um, so pretty much in everything on YouTube now is minimum 1080p. Uh, you've got so much 4K content now as well. Um, you can navigate into the settings pretty quickly, pretty easily. Uh, so you've got all your sources. Uh, my sources, obviously, the actual TV tuner itself. Then you've got the amplifier, uh, USB. That's actually the TV detected my uh, router straight away. Um, you've also got, got all your settings. One of the most important settings to change, as soon as you go into the picture settings, you want to go to expert settings. Um, and as Tom Cruise said, you want to navigate down to, um, I think it's Auto Motion Plus, I think on, it was what Samsung calls, calls it, but you want to turn that off anyway, straight away, because that's the thing that kind of turns anything that has like a 24 uh, frames per second rate, like a, any traditional Hollywood movie, and turns into almost like a video camera style. Um, uh, visual experience so it really destroys any kind of uh, film feel to any film so you want to turn that off straight away um, yeah and as soon as you connect the TV to your Wi-Fi to your internet um, a whole rake of uh, new options become available which is great um, and basically the wizards are so easy to navigate everything works really well um, yeah and you've got all your standard Samsung uh, apps in installed straight away you also have your gallery your internet browser uh, RTE player, um, yeah, and you can add all your additional apps if you want. So, um, so yeah, the menus are pretty cool. Um, one or two little quirks. Uh, sometimes you turn the panel off, turn it back on. You can hesitate. You could be waiting five, ten seconds uh, for the menus to become available. Ten seconds, a bit of a stretch maybe. Um, but yeah, five seconds. Sometimes it doesn't do what you expect it to do. Um, and quite annoyingly, I suppose it's more to do with how I have my amplifier set up. Sometimes if the amplifier comes on after the TV comes on, then the DVD player boots up and then the TV is automatically trying to load up uh, the Blu-ray player. Instead of you want to go into YouTube or into your USB stick, you kind of have to wait for the Blu-ray player to stop loading and all that kind of stuff. So that's more to do with the amplifier than the TV itself. Um, but yeah, overall, uh, very happy with the panel. Okay, so one thing I haven't actually done yet is connect the TV to some kind of like a gaming console or PC. Uh, which I would like to do because it'd be pretty cool to see what say PUBG looks like on the panel. Um, only problem is PC is actually in the room behind here. Um, I'm gonna need my keyboard and mouse. Everything's on this table here, so you know what? I'm just gonna drag the whole thing in. We'll see what PUBG looks like on a 75 inch panel. Right, okay, I finally have the setup. Is that not the largest desktop you've ever seen? Uh, so the way I have it set up, I've got the PC underneath, and uh, just running a regular HDMI cable uh, straight into the uh, One Connect box. Uh, and oh my God, <laughs> look at the size of the icons up the top left. I, I really feel the scale of this really is lost on a video, but anyway, believe me, in person, it is absolutely monstrous. Um, so, where's the cursor? I can't even see it. Um, so pretty much straight away, Windows just defaulted um, to a 2K resolution. Uh, I think this is the max supported. Um, there's actually a full video on this by uh, Linus Tech Tips, how difficult it is to actually get Windows to work in 8K, let alone any games. So, uh, so that's the max resolution that's available to me at the moment. Uh, so that's the way it's set. Um, yeah, so everything is so incredibly small. Um, the scaling or the, the framing of the actual resolution uh, or of the image, basically of Windows image on the panel, it seems to be ever so slightly off as you can see. That's something I could adjust, but you know what? I'm just doing this for demo purposes. So um, you know what? Let's get PUBG on the go here if I can, if I can find it um, and see how this goes. Look at the sheer size of this. <laughs> I don't know what kind of resolution the game's gonna run in, but uh, we'll know once it actually boots up. So whenever it does, I'm gonna come back to it.
Okay, so I just figured out why Windows was uh, ever so slightly kind of out of frame. Um, the native resolution of the panel is actually 3840 uh, by 2160. I have it set to uh, 4096 by 2160, so uh, that's irrelevant. But uh, PUBG, it crashed the first time I loaded it. But it's working again. Um, yeah, there we go. I want to see what way the settings are set up with this. Um, so settings. And then, okay, so set to 1080p. I mean, the game just is not going to run at this kind of resolution. But you know what? I want to see what it's like. Uh, I've got a 1080 GTX in here. Uh, I think it's an 8 gigabyte, 8 gigabyte model. Um, so let's apply this and see if the computer just grinds to a halt. Okay, so it bombed out the windows with the games in the background running still. And I can't get it back. Oh, here we go, okay. Okay. Okay, well, the mouse is actually moving pretty smoothly. I'm gonna pop back in here again. Um, and actually set it to the native resolution. Okay, looks good. Um, let's give this a go. So it's just about to boot up. That is one hell of a gaming setup. <laughs> oh, it's monstrous. Um, I can't imagine I'm, go I'm going to get much more than maybe 25, 30 FPS from this. Wow, uh, okay. Oh, I'm surprised. That's pretty slick. I'm very surprised. I normally have the FPS down the bottom left of, of the screen. I can't actually see it. I'm not sure why it's not there, but... Let's see what it's actually like in the middle of a game. I thought this would be a lot choppier than it is. Like, it's not super smooth. That's purely down to the uh, limitations of my machine. Nothing to do with the panel. It is so incredibly crisp. I can't get over the level of detail. <laughs> and I already run this game at a, a relatively um, high resolution, but I'm surprised the level of detail you get just having the larger panel. Uh, all this being said, I can't imagine this is running at more than maybe 40 FPS. Sounds like I'm in a bit of trouble here. I don't fancy my chances here. But anyway, my God. And I was actually surprised. I, I thought sitting against the panel so close, it'd be very, very difficult to use or, you know, kind of just a bit of a novelty. But uh, I'm actually surprised by how very usable this is. I mean, the keyboard and mouse are right here. The panel is no more than maybe one meter away from the back of the keyboard. So um, yeah, I'm gonna have another go and uh, see how I get on. Maybe the slightly lower resolution, actually. I'm gonna try and uh, Maybe bring down to 1080p and see what the upscaling is like on the panel. Right guys, so I've downgraded to 1080p and um, so it's upscaled to, uh, well, 8K presumably. Um, I'm actually going to land yeah, somewhere busy like this. But yeah, I mean, there's not a noticeable uh, degradation in terms of quality, uh, even though it's a quarter of the resolution. Is it a quarter? That math is so difficult to work out. 
but perfectly usable, so much smoother in its resolution, so as you might imagine. Um, and again, so much fun playing with a panel of this size. It really is. It's like I'm late to the party here. Okay, so the frame rate isn't phenomenal. I still say it's less than it's probably 40 or 50 FPS after the top, so it's dropping. You get some uh, drops maybe close to a 20 or 30 FPS. Overall, it's pretty good. Cool. And I'm dead straight away. <laughs> Let's get another game on the go here. Right, so I've just loaded up Sandhook. As you can see, it's one of the foggy maps. Um, but I just noticed there, just before I started, I just, even though it is only a 1080p resolution, you can see so much more detail, even just the lettering on the back of my guy's cap. Like, traditionally on a smaller panel, you may be running a higher resolution, but you just can't see that level of detail because it's just such a large panel. It's absolutely huge. Even staring down at magazines on the ground or flashbangs or anything like that, they seem almost lifelike in terms of size. It's just absolutely phenomenal the difference with a larger panel. So I'm going to try and at least get one kill so you can see that I'm not 100% useless. But yeah, it's nice and smooth. The frame rate is definitely increased with this lower resolution. So I'm landing late as usual. Guys, go to my spot. So is that guy. So a lot of this lag that I'm experiencing right now is actually not even my machine. It's thanks to the Wi-Fi connection I'm using. I normally have to run a hardwired LAN connection, but because I'm in the sitting room, I'm using Wi-Fi. It's very unlikely I'm going to survive this. actually play like this on a regular basis with a panel of this size. Like my eyes are absolutely good. But uh my god that guy can't hit me. <laughs> oh my god man. How have I survived this long? There you go. But yeah overall performance is pretty damn good. Just lost my camera there. Uh, for a panel this size, it's really quite impressive, um, and like I say, perfectly playable. Uh, so I'm going to spend the rest of the evening giving this a go and uh, see how much better I get. So, but yeah, one other thing I didn't mention earlier on is just regarding the actual panel itself. Uh, a little bit of an annoyance, but when you actually turn the TV off with the remote control, uh, there's actually inbuilt fans, so the TV will continue to cool itself even after the TV's been turned off. So I haven't actually timed that. I think it lasts in and around maybe 20, 30 seconds. So. Um, and also while the TV is running, you can also hear the fans running as well. So, uh, so they're actually in the panel itself, which is quite interesting. So it must get pretty hot in, in, that, in some regards. So, um, but yeah, Q900 or definitely recommend it. Um, not a particularly cheap panel. Um, even the 85 inch, I think it was, well, maybe seven or 8,000 euro more. Uh, sorry, the 85 over, over the 75. So uh, I went for the 75, got an exceptional deal. Um, so. Yeah, if you, if you can make the extra stretch to the, the larger 8K panel, I definitely recommend it. Uh, thanks for watching, and make sure you hit the subscribe button.